In joining me now is Talk Radio's royal correspondent Rupert Bell, uh, Princess Diana's friend Sally Morgan, who worked with her for nearly five years in the 90s, and lawyer uh, Paula Roan Adrienne. Ladies and Rupert, uh, welcome. Sally, can I start with you? Um, I found it really strange. I, I live in Windsor. I, I went up to the castle today to just gauge opinion, yeah. and I almost found this generational reaction, if I'm honest. The older generation uh, called her beautiful, wonderful, inspirational and caring uh, and have no time for Meghan Markle. The younger generation would say to me, we don't really know too much except for what we've watched on The Crown, but we feel sorry for Meghan. Who was Diana, the woman that you knew? What made her so special in I your think, mind? Well, I think that she was, um, she, and she turned out to be very outspoken. She, uh, she was one of the first people to talk about her mental health mm -hmm. and mental health. She was one of the first prominent people to embrace individuals with AIDS. Mm -hmm. She was somebody that stood up for the underdog. And I also think that people could see her pain. I certainly could see it, and I saw it on a daily basis. The, the was she inspirational? I think she was. I mean, she was inspiration for so many people, for, for so many women at that time that were having difficulties in their marriage, in their relationships. You know, if the Princess of Wales can divorce the Prince of Wales, if that can happen, then I can certainly leave my husband who isn't treating me too well or is having an affair. So I think that she was an inspiration to many people. Um, Paula, to bring you in, um, Meghan Markle has, by anybody's standards, um, caused so much reaction and let's be honest a lot of it negative you could feel that today on the streets you read it almost every day I think she's caused a negative reaction I do think that the press have reacted negatively my problem so... my, my problem with that and I said it last night and the reason we're doing it is because it is it is everywhere and it's what people want to talk about here's what I'm gonna say and I'll say it again if you don't want to be in the royal family uh, because you don't want the press exposure and you don't like every facet of your life being interrogated. I get that. You go to California with the love of your life and you have two children. You don't land and sign a deal with Spotify. And this is the bit that really gets on my bits, if I'm being completely honest. Every single time there is something that matters to the royal family, like the death of Prince Philip, like, you know, today, the 25th anniversary, what does old Meghan Markle do? Drop her latest truth bomb. It's a podcast. It's true. Her timing is dreadful, Paula. Yeah, no, I think it is. I think that, uh, you know, listen, they this love is what one happens. This is what happens. It, the negativity just runs right, doesn't it? a fact. It? I'm going to say a negative. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and say a negative. When we talk about facts, I think what we're missing here mm. is reality. You described Diana so beautifully, and I would say that I could describe Meghan in exactly the same way. Well, we could describe... I could absolutely. describe Meghan in that way, but if and you look at forget, what she's done we? to well, the royal family... It's not what she's done to the royal family. Let's well, she remember has. that. Do you not think she's manipulative? She has. I don't, I don't know her. What I do know is that the message, the very clear message that we are getting reported to us, is that she's a bully, that she's aggressive, that she's taken over Harry's life as if he's some weak individual. And yet we forget that his own mother was forced to flee this country. Yep. She herself was planning yep. to move to LA. She herself had decided to begin a relationship with somebody who didn't look like her, who didn't talk like her, who didn't come from a family that fit into the establishment. And this is what you're asking of Meghan. She wasn't prepared for this, and neither were the establishment. The establishment got it wrong with Diana, they got it wrong with Andrew, well, and no, they got I, it wrong with... Let me, let me bring in, let me bring in, let me bring in, let me bring in Rupert Bell, if I can. Talk to his royal correspondent. He shared a goddaughter with Diana, knows through his family, his brother trains for the Queen, many links, Coldstream guards as well. Rupert, you're very, you know, you, you always play it very straight down the line. What did you respect, what was your response to what I said about Meghan Markle, like her or loathe her? It seems to me that she drops this stuff at the exact moment to cause as much embarrassment and hurt to the royal family as possible. It does all... Her timing is horrendous. And, but she has created this. We, when we went to the wedding, the groundswell of public opinion was so much in her favour. And yet she has managed and to end up basically painting this picture that everything is everybody else's fault. It's never her fault. <clears throat> and I think that's part of the problem. It always seems to be saying that 
X member of the royal family has done this, that member of the royal family has done that. She has not done anything wrong. And I think that's what's frustrating people. Why does she always feel the need to pay the victim as she sits in her $14 million villa in, in California when most of us can't, you know, are worried about whether they're going to get food on the table? So I really do think she needs to start reading the room and realize that what she is saying most of the time doesn't resonate with most of the British public. Paula, that's quite an interesting point of Rupert's. How would you respond to that? Well, quite easily. We talk about this groundswell as if we can dictate what others think. I don't know what the society thinks because it's not being reported. What I'm being told is that that's what people think. But your own report has just informed us that actually there's a lot of people out there who have sympathy for yep, her. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, su I suspect... I started by saying it was generational. I genuinely yeah, believe yeah, that. Absolutely. Um, and I wonder if it's because of where people are getting their information from. And if it is generational, which I think is probably right, um, there is the younger generation that get their information, get their news from other places. Absolutely. There's the older generation who get their news but you, from different places but... and who trust where they get their news I, I, I'm not doubting that, but you haven't answered the question, and, and a supporter of Fear Hagen of her last night also did not answer the question. Do you not think there is something in the fact, in my opinion there is, we're all entitled to opinion, that every time Prince Philip died, today is the 25th anniversary of Diana, the Queen is ill, she keeps dropping this stuff via third and fourth parties. There's got to be... I'm not saying she might not have a case. I'm not saying it wasn't hard. I'm not saying that there have been people who have said and done things massively unfair to her. I absolutely can see the comparisons, but I absolutely... When I look at those pictures of the two of them in the, uh, the, the Diana picture and the black polo neck and her as well, Diana looks vulnerable, lost, scared. Meghan Markle looks straight down the camera and looks like I've got this absolutely licked. I don't... She, she doesn't create sympathy no. in me. That's no. the problem. And, and, and let me tell you why, because let me answer the question, because you answer the question yourself, but your tone was very quiet when you did. I noticed that. You said that the bombs are dropped by some third or fourth party person. Omar Schmidt or something, so isn't it? we're not suggesting, are we, that this is Meghan? That is putting out this information. Well, we know that, her. No, that is, that, but it is, that, but it is that, Meghan that wants the that information. But doesn't deny any point. of it, though, does she? Come yes, on. And then, secondly, yeah. even if she did deny it, where are we going to read that? Why do you forgive her? Where are we I going to I, read I, that? Are you with me on this? There's a Harper's well, Bazaar article that came out in, in, I think it was 2021. Forgive me if I've got the date wrong, where it referenced in very in lots of detail about the approach that is taken in relation to Meghan, as opposed to the approach that is taken to. Lovely is that because of the colour of her skin? Serious? I, don't, I don't know. You tell me. I, I'm interested in what you say to that. I mean, well, I, she I, would I, tell you, yes. Archetypes yesterday. She? You heard the podcast. She, she yes. said that she yes. she felt that she was treated as a as a black woman only when she married a prince. Um, and that's, of course, in any way, if that's right, that's fundamentally wrong. I've said that from day one. I just can't, Sally, get away from. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. I can't. See, Rupert makes a really, really good point. How does that look and sound right now with this country on the precipice of economic well, yeah. disaster? Well, absolutely. But I do think that when you look at Meghan and you look at how she is the one that really is controlling Harry, there's absolutely no doubt she Come is. On, I mean, Sally. no, she is, Paula. Harry she, she, was vociferous no, but I, in, and has Harry is to be. totally and utterly in love with her. When you really, really love someone, you will do anything for them. She recognises that. She refused. She looked at the system. She refused to bow to her brother-in-law and her sister-in-law. She could not understand. I'll tell, I'll tell you what I want to bring on to, and I want to bring Rupert back in, because I'd like the three of you to, to, to answer this next question. Rupert, what would Diana, the people's princess, and let's be honest, flawed, let's be honest, with her ex-husband, both used the media systematically. My old man worked for the Queen Mother, and he said that everybody after the Queen has used the media. What would Diana have, have said about Meghan? It, when I was out and about today at Windsor Castle, half of the people were saying she'd have taken her under the wing, she'd have felt sorry for her. The other half was saying she would have been gutted that her well, son she... and, her brother, and his brother had split up over this woman and she'd have taken Definitely. action. What would you say, Rupert? I, I think she would have tried to give Meghan all the advice and would have probably been around to actually 
explain the pitfalls that are likely to come her way and realize what joining the firm is all about. Yeah. Now, I don't know whether they were briefed enough, but the Dutch, uh, Meghan Markle has said that she wasn't briefed. Well, she knew all about it. When you go in and are going to be uh, a member of the royal family, it's pretty, it comes out pretty quickly. And I think that's what she would have done. She would have, and she would have had plenty of experience, good, bad, indifferent, whatever, to bring to the table. Because remember, she came to the royal family as a 19-year-old, very inexperienced young lady. A, a big age gap between her and her husband. Whereas Meghan was a, a lady of the world, been an actress, been out there already married before, so much more experienced. There was a naivety about Diana in the early stages because of the way the royal family was at the time. That then changed and she became a force, you know, not always a, a force, you know, she was flawed, as you referred to, Jeremy, but she did, though, still have the well-being of her children completely at the centre of whatever she, would can I, can she I also, did. Can I, saw that throughout her life. I agree. Can I just say that, 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 that I mean, I, I actually, I'm going to disagree with you and Rupert a little bit, because, and I know this from the old man, there is absolutely no preparation for going into the royal family. I, yeah. And the reason Thank you're nodding, I, yeah. there, I don't care who you are, you can give them a list from A to Z. Yeah. I'm sure it's... You, absolutely. I'm a, the fact, that's not my point. My point is, to me, and we will differ, but that's human nature, it's a democracy, right? She used to stand outside Buckingham Palace. I'm utterly convinced this was her big plan. I'm utterly convinced she went for this. I'm being completely serious. And I, and I, ju I think what it is, is I've said about that picture, Jeremy, there's no but... vulnerability. There's, she doesn't link with people, in my humble opinion. Well, because she's I don't not vulnerable. Have... She's not Jeremy, vulnerable. That's if, the reason. If that's... No, we're with, sorry, Paula. With, with vulnerability, genuine vulnerability, yeah. you can see it. You can she sense it. You can, oh, it's palpable. She is a woman who has walked oh. into the establishment. Uh, I am telling you, whether you can see it on her face or not, we are very used to walking into situations where we have to put on our smile. Do you think smile. she knew it was going to be like that, Paula? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She would have gone in there with her rose-tinted glasses, I'm going to be a princess and I'm going to float around and this is going to be amazing. That's how she approached this and she got so a rude you... awakening. And can I say, just to answer the question that Rupert got the opportunity to, yep. you asked what would Diana have yep. done? Yep. Diana would have been living with Meghan in LA. No, she wouldn't have done. That's where they would have no been. No way. Because that's what Diana needed to do. And I think she we're wouldn't. forgetting how the press treated the, Diana. The, the you must that, forget the, the that. One thing we that are Diana painting You were her all. friend. What would what, she have well, done? I would say her friend. I, 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 I spoke to her every day for four and a half years. Um, you're never really their friend, Jeremy, as we were just saying. No. But okay. basically, I think that she would... The most... The priority for Diana now would be that her boys were not estranged. Yeah, mm. absolutely. That would have been... And if that would have meant that she would have had to have pretended to try and in some way counsel Meghan, she would have... You've got to remember also that Diana, yes, she was naive when she married the Prince of Wales, but she was aristocratic. She'd been brought up yeah. with yeah, the royal family. Yeah, good point. She knew... And her sisters, who counselled her, knew the system. Yeah. So you never know until you're in there. And as, as I've just said to you, you're never their friends. Never, ever. Even aristocratic people, even other royals, are never really their friends. There is this... They're, they're in a bubble. That's why William at the moment and Catherine, they're in Do this you, bubble. Can, can, I, can I just say... I, I, and I think it's... I think I'm really pleased that we've spoken like this because I think it, it was, for me, really interesting to see the reaction today from people. One final question... Are you surprised? To... Were you expecting total negativity? Yep. Yeah. Really good question. Yeah. Really good question. And, and what shocked me most was three teenage girls, I thought they were 20, who said, well, we've seen it on The Crown, which just blew my mind, so to speak. <laughs> um, the three it's of you... It's a historical programme, well, Do you, yeah. do you yeah. think, the three of you, we'll start with Rupert, ladies first, do you <laughs> think that the British public will ever take Meghan Markle to their hearts Never. as... Diana, undoubtedly, flaws and all, was taken. Yes or no, Rue? Uh, not in her present form. She's going to have to learn to um, not always be knocking the institution that has been around since 1066. The, the, the royal family may be a flawed institution at times, but there's only one person who matters, and that is the reigning monarch. The rest have to do her bidding, and you've got to work around it. And Meghan needed to learn how to work around it and cope with the fact that Harry was six in line to the throne and was, in essence, an extra to the main members of the royal family, Charles and William. They were but bit part players. Thank you, Rupert. Uh, Paula, final word? I'm... 
a member of the British society and I accept her to my heart. Good for you. Sally? Well, I, we have to accept her. She's married to Harry, but I think that the, the general public... She's, she's a very headstrong, manipulative... Um, she's very manipulative, Paul. Other now. people she's would a, say she's independent. A business, she's a businesswoman. Well, well, right, so there's yeah, your point, and I've run out of time, but yeah. did she look about this whole thing as a business? Of there you are, it's a very she interesting in point. As was a divorce she? lawyer, I can tell you. She, she was in, us oh, a divorce lawyer. <laughs> oh, God, nobody told me that. You could have told me that a while ago. Are we paying her for this? Right, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Rupert.